Welcome back friends, another episode of Lynch Paints where I, Lynch, will be showing you all today how to paint a scimitar jet bike for your Night Lords Legion. So let's grab our paints and paintbrushes and our flame knives and let's dive straight into it. But before we start to paint our lovely Night Lord Rap Scallion, we're going to need a couple of paints and these are all the ones I use in this video today. Alongside which we will need a medium sized brush, a finer detail brush, and of course, a teeny weeny teeny tiny brush for all those teeny tiny places. First step as always is to prime our miniature and this time we're going to apply a nice coat of black acrylic primer. I swapped out the shoulder pads with the Mark IV kits because I'm not a fan of the Mark VI with it being smooth. I quite like the, the trim around the outside. Same with the helmet as well, so I swapped that for the Mark IV as well. Um, I've only lightly tacked it in with a little bit of super glue because in the future I'm hoping to get some of the, well, some more of the Terror Squad upgrades and, and swap the helmet over to something a little more Night Lordy. With the weapon on the front, I haven't glued it in yet, I'm going to work out a way to magnetize them so I can just swap them out. So that will come on to later on. So we'll focus on the bodywork and for this we are going to need a nice chunky mm, that size brush, maybe not. Maybe yes, why not? Change my mind. Um, no. So indecisive. We're going to go with a medium sort of basing brush. I'm going to want some Cantor Blue and mix up with some Abaddon Black. Right, that's the first layer done on the armor panels and the rider himself. Now I'm just going to quickly pause here to just thank today's sponsor. Me. No, I'm just joking. I'm just, I'm just, no sponsor on here. Well, at least not yet anyway. But what we're going to do, getting back to it, is we're going to look at the metal work. So I want to do this first, just so then if there are any, any mistakes, they go on to the blue. We're still early on in the process that we can correct it rather than finishing up on the armor and end up overspilling with some of this. Um, I mean, you might want that. You might more uh, want more of a weathered look then by all means, do this step later on. But for now, I'm just gonna do it just before we get too carried away. So you want, want a nice fluffy brush, um, an old makeup brush like this would work fantastically and a hell of a lot cheaper because it was for free because I just finished it for my wife. Um, and we're just going to just apply a little bit of silver just here and there um, the reason why that I've done the blue armor so dark is because, well, of course, it's midnight clad. It's meant to be really, really dark. Um, obviously, I will build the colors up, but um, in general, I'm not a huge fan of how Games Workshop have painted the Night Lords. They look, to be honest, to me anyway, and probably to many of you out there as well that are fans of the Night Lords, um, they look a lot like Crimson Fists. That's not Midnight Clad. That's just dark blue. What are you doing, lads? I mean, oh, honestly, like, I miss the days of the old Ford World painting staff, because their stuff looked absolutely fantastic, whereas now it's... It's not grim dark enough. It's just it's missing that that kind of edge that the older games work, uh, older Ford World Horse Heresy stuff used to have. Have a little look on their website on uh, Ford World. And just go back through some of their older models, not not their newer ones, because that's painted very much in a Games Workshop style, where it's like very heavy outlines and everything's kind of a bit. It might be a bit too bright and cheerful I mean you know depending on the model <laughs> generally but uh, yeah I just fell in love with the old Horus Heresy style of painting so yeah if you're curious do check it out it is awesome but anyway getting back to it so with the metal work once we've applied this kind of first layer we can go back over the top um, as 
a thinner dry brush with a lighter silver just to create a, a bit of a bit of a highlight sort of thing um, and then you can give it a wash with I mean I prefer Agrax in the shade because I, I quite like that uh, so warmer hue I'm missing a handle oh crud I will sort that out luckily it's only very very minor I was just paint, painting on thought hang on a minute um, yeah I obviously didn't look at the instructions very well but never mind Right, now that we have that done, we're going to go back over to the armour. Now, at this point, if your paint from previously has dried up, and you can't quite remember exactly what the ratio was before, because uh, now we're going to make it slightly lighter, uh, the best bet is just to roughly mix up what you had before, add in a little bit more con uh, Cantor Blue, and if it turns out that it is too bright, because we are thinning our paints with water, you can quickly wipe it off with some tissue, um, and then just alter on the fly and add in a little bit more black just to darken it down or if it's too dark and doesn't stand out at all then just add in some more blue and we're going to repeat this process just a couple of times until we have the right sort of brightness or sort of tone of our midnight cloud blue and then once we're happy with it, we will then move on to the next step. After a few applications, it should look something like this. So now I'm just going to use pure Cantor Blue. And then using a nice fine tipped brush, it's going to start to highlight and sort of just pick out certain areas that I want to be even brighter. Um, with this, because we're going to be thinning it down with water, it might take one or two extra coats just over the top just to make it stand out rather than having to make the paint lighter. So just with this, take your time and you'll have a lovely result. Now that the blue of the armour has been taken care of, we're going to move over to the black shoulder pads. So, this is entirely optional, you don't have to give them black shoulder pads. Um, but I just like to give it a slight variation, so it's not all blue. And normally what I would do for black armour is that I'd use Inky by Darkness, because it has a nice blue hue and it contrasts nicely from... Um, like the metal work as that tends to be sort of typically silvers and greys but I'm going to do it the other way so I'm going to have the black armour in more sort of grey so it then helps to stand out from against all the blue because otherwise if you're using it by darkness it's it's not going to stand out very well so I've just gone over just to tidy up a few little areas um, mainly just on the chest plate so come back over with the black and then just touch up with some of the silver so I'm gonna go over the trim with some of this lovely brass scorpion now most night lords they tend to have a sort of silvery trim but I prefer mine to have the gold um, purely because that the way that I've set my night lords in the setting is that they're sort of very early on in the Great Crusade so they're not fully crazy and they're more from Nostromo so there is more of a sense of um, I don't know, kind of like regalness to them um, and honour so they're still obviously night lords and prefer the terror tactics but they're not as barbaric as everyone from Nostromo I say everyone, most people. So, yeah, that's why. I'm, and also, the, the blue and the gold works really well. And it also sort of ties into their 40k counterparts as well, because obviously, they, um, a lot of like their ships and vehicles and stuff, they tend to have their gold trim rather than the silver. So, plus, it, it just looks really nice. So, I can't argue with that. Now 
now that that's done, we are going to move over to giving it a little wash. So, I'm going to choose this Agrax Earth shade, and then using a medium sized brush, it's going to apply this over the metal works. In this, you can pick and choose uh, where you want it to be, depending on how weathered you'd like it, um, or how sort of clean you'd like your models to look, whether they're sort of straight out of the Mechanicum floor, um, rather than, you know, shop floor. And, um, or if you want it kind of really grimy and really kind of battle-worn, then you might need a couple of layers of this Agrax Air Shade, along with probably some other sort of weathering powders and washes and that sort of thing, but I was going to just do the one coat just over the top, uh, probably a bit more on these exhaust, not exhaust, but this kind of pipework here, and yeah, we'll leave it to dry, the other thing afterwards, we will move on to the lightning. So while the wash was drying, I sort of had a little bit of fun with adding in a little skull just to cover the square hole on the top of the bike. Because I couldn't really figure out what else to put on there. So the kit gives you either an Aquila or the Eye of Horus, and I didn't really want either of those for my Night Lords. So I figured a nice skull would do pretty nicely. So I'll get that painted up later on. So now we're going to do some really fun stuff. So we're going to take our Cantor Blue and some Lothram Blue. We're going to give it a bit of a 50 50 mix. And this is going to be the kind of the, the glow of the lightning so with this you want to take a, a nice sort of fine tip brush and just going to shove them over there and then if you need um, to kind of work out how lightning is formed then look at some reference pictures online just to give you a general idea so we're going to do a slightly thicker line for now with this and then once that's dried we'll go with pure Lothram blue to make a line within the line so it gives it that sort of glow effect um, as well make sure you just thin your paints down with enough water just so then you got nice control and uh, just have fun So now using our same teeny weeny tiny brush, we are going to grab some white, I'm going to thin it down, and then what we're going to do is that we're going to mark out some of the stronger points of a lightning. Um, so I say stronger points, the most um, compacted almost, I, I don't know what the term is, but anyway, so like these bits here where the lightning is forking off. So it's going to put in just a little bit there just to see, well rather just to show the amount of energy that's coming through and it just gives a nice, um, nice image, makes it, uh, makes it glow quite nicely. So again thin your paint, take your time with this and it will look pretty damn good when it's all done. Now, while we're using our finer detail brush, we are going to move over to another little detailed area, which is his eyes. So, I want to grab some red, and we're going to mix in a little bit of black. 
what I'm going to want. It's probably a 50-50 mix to start out with. So the eyes are currently already um, painted black. If they're not, give it a coat of black and then start this step. So I'm going to want to cover probably two thirds of the eye with this first mix. So just leaving a little bit of black right at the back. And this is going to help to create that glow effect really, really well. And that's that. It's going to just give it a little rinse. And then we're going to mix in more red. We're going to probably do just pure Mephiston red. Now we want to cover the third. And just kind of swoop under as best you can. And now, just for the final bit at the top, in the very kind of middle, it's going to mix in a little bit of yellow, just to create our orange. If you have an orange already, happy days, just carry on. I'm going to need just a little dot, just sat at the middle. Not the middle, but you know what I mean. The middle of the face, not the middle of the, the lens. There we go. Oh, sorry, can't see there. Showing you the skull. Um, there we go. So something like, like that. Uh, now, we're just going to give that a good old rinse. I'm going to grab our white, and then we're going to want to pop a little dot at the back of the eye lens. What this will do, it will create that lovely sort of reflection effect that we're after. So that's the eyes done. Um, all that's left to do now, really, is just to paint that skull. Um, I've already gone ahead and painted the melter weapon at the front. So what I've done is I've watered down some purple, kind of a, a quite dark purple. And then painted from the end to about two thirds of the way up the barrel, or sort of halfway if you're counting kind of this bit here. And then once it's dried, I've then gone from here to maybe like a, the third up in a in the lost from uh, lost from purple, <laughs> sorry, lost from blue, um, or just any kind of light blue. And then just kind of went around the edge with just pure the lost from blue, not sort of watered down too much and that gives it a nice sort of burnt metal effect. So it's going to finish up on the skull and we'll be back in a moment. And so here we are at the end of the video. So this is how I went about painting a scimitar jet bike for my Night Lords Legion. So I do appreciate you all watching all the way through to the end. It really does mean a lot. Um, if you had any sort of likes, suggestions, that sort of thing, uh, comment down below if there's any sort of things that you loved, things that maybe you might have sort of done differently. Um, I'd love to know down below. And I will be painting up soon the other two of the jet bikes. I kind of held off a little bit because I wanted to try and get some spare Night Lordy parts, but um, they just haven't arrived yet. So I'm hoping to, when they do arrive, swap the heads over and just kind of make the marine on top just that little bit more Night Lordy. So using the Terra Swan upgrade kit, because it is amazing. Uh, if you wanted to pick up a squad of these for yourselves, then I do have a link for Wayland Games down in the description below. They're a UK based retailer and they stock all kinds of amazing miniatures and models and card games and board games and all the like. And a little bit goes towards me and to create sort of more videos, new projects for all you guys and girls to watch along at home. So yeah, don't be shy, click that down below. Um, if you did like as well, uh, obviously a like <laughs> would be massively appreciated. And if you're new, a subscribe would be equally as awesome. We're sort of, I say fast approaching, or at least for me anyway, um, a thousand subscribers. So yeah, I've got under a hundred to go. And I'd love to get to that milestone. Um, you know, that's absolutely mean, um, well, not everything, but it would be absolutely amazing if I could reach that. Um, hopefully by the end of the year, I'm hoping. 
Um, so yeah, again, if you're new, just click it down below. It's free, it takes two seconds. Thank you very much. And there will be stills and reels of this bike and hopefully the future ones as well um, over at my Instagram page at Lynch Paints. And if you're new over there, then yeah, give, give me a follow over there as well. You can keep track of like my other progresses and my other projects that I've got going on at the minute. And yeah, there is a lot. There's a lot of Sons of Horus that I'm having to, to work through um, over the next couple of months sort of thing. Well, it's going to be a long time yet. But anyway, I will um, enlighten you all about that when the time is right. So thanks ever so much for watching. Stay safe, stay beautiful, and we'll see you next time.